Wednesday we have a council meeting, so let's not forget that, you council members. And um, I have no updates for you for Sus or Nina. Everything seems to be about the same. Summer's here, Summer, we've been praying for you a lunch. So know that everybody here is rooting for you. Um, are there other prayer concerns we need to raise before the congregation before we get started? Then let us prepare our hearts and minds to receive the Word of God. Would you please stand? We confess our sins before God and one another. Eternal Lord, we live in a world of anguish, and our sin only multiplies our suffering. Our despair discourages others. Our hopelessness paralyzes us.
therapy with you all. And also with you. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty God, your strength far outstrips any earthly power. May we put our fears inside and our trust in you, in whom our hopes will not be disappointed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The reading, Revelations 6, 1 through 8, and 7, 9 through 17. When I saw the Lamb open one of the seven seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures call out as with a voice of thunder, Ah! I looked, and there was a white horse. Its rider had a bow, a crown was given to him, and he came out conquering and to conquer. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature call out, Come, and out came another horse, bright red. Its wide rider was permitted to take peace from the earth, so the people would slander one another, and he was given a great sword. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature call out, Come. I looked, and there was a black horse. Its rider had held a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard what seemed to be a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a day's pay, and three quarts of barley for a day's pay. But do no damage, the oil, olive oil and the wine. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature call out, Come! I looked, and there was a pale green horse. The rider's name was Death, and Hades followed him. They were given authority over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, famine, and pestilence, and by the wild animals of the earth. After this, I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hand. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs through our Lord, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped the God, singing, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our Lord forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you're the one who knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robe, their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorched, scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to the springs of water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to God, or John, the fourth chapter. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also, and you know the way to the place where I am going. This is the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Are you happy? 
know, it's the end of sitting and playing your video games all day, isn't it? Now you have to go to school and learn. I have a question for you, though. Let's see how smart you are before you start school. Where do we find God? Everywhere. Really? Well, when I want to go somewhere, I usually pull up my GPS on, the on my telephone. My cell phone. You don't have a telephone anymore, do you? What? Heaven? I don't think I can navigate to heaven. However, another thing we use is a map. Right? On this map, it shows where everything is, and if we want to go someplace, we get the map out. And we try to find where we're going. See this? Cool, huh? That's a map of one of the islands, Kauai. And boy, how about that? Of course I kept that, right? But in the church, what do we use for a map to tell us where Jesus is? Can you think of something? Are there special places in the church where we can find Jesus? Yes, where? Other than everywhere, which is true. Where are the special places in church? Baptism. We find Jesus, good girl. We find Jesus in the baptismal font, right? In your baptism. When you were baptized, you became a child of God. Where else do we find Jesus in the church? That did not make you sneeze. Where else do we find God? Think, look around. Everybody? Well, everybody. Save that one for last. Is there any place behind me where we find God? The cross. The cross. What about someplace else back there? Somewhere where? The railing up here at the altar. What do we get when we come up here and kneel? Get juice and bread. What is that juice and bread? What does it represent? Um, his, blood. his body and his blood. Is it really blood and body? No. We believe that God is in, with, and around those elements. That when we pray over those, that they we get the spirit of God that we take in with the with the wine and the bread. I'll show you one more place. How about out here? Is God out here? Brit, Asia, you, I almost called you your mother. This, you got this. In the middle, in the midst of people, God is in, with, under, and around all of us. Okay. So what was your answer when I first asked you where do we find God? What did you say? Me? All of you. Everywhere. You're right. So remember that God is with you when you start school Tuesday. When do you start school? Wednesday. Don't forget September 12th to bring your backpacks so we can bless your backpacks. Let's bring a friend to church day so we can invite people to church that day, and that's the start of Sunday school. Okay? All right, let us pray. Dear God, Dear God. Thank, you thank you for being everywhere. Amen. All right, thanks for coming up. See you later, kids.
plan for the saving of humanity. Such a scroll was bound to be sealed with a wax seal, but this scroll wasn't sealed with one wax seal. It had seven seals on it, which indicated that this was a very, very important document, and there was no human worthy of opening such a document. Well, the opening of the seal reveals what is predicted to come, and if you were listening, it didn't sound very good. This action releases a nightmare commonly known as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. It's similar to Zechariah's vision, if you are familiar with that. The first writer of these four writers attacks and conquers with a message that there is no security in strong national defense. Ouch. The second one opens. This writer creates war and rebellion within the people, showing that there's no security in the role of society. Have we not seen some of that recently? You know, think about it. The third was open. That writer spreads famine and poverty, showing there's absolutely no security in wealth. And the fourth, that writer brings death with a message that there's no security in life because we'll all die someday. Well, gee, thank you, God. That was a wonderful, secure, uplifting message. There are scary visions. Who can open these seals? Who can save us from this nightmare? The Lamb of God. The Lion of the tribe of Judah. The Root of David. Jesus. He's the one that's powerful enough to open that scroll. And even more than that, it's the Lamb of God that makes the contents of that scroll a reality that he takes care of. Jesus, because of his sacrifice, has bridged that gap between heaven and earth. It's made God accessible to all of us. We don't go through another saint to get to God. We can go directly to God. Truly, this is a scene to behold, to think about, and an, event, an event to sing praises absolutely as loud as you possibly can. Worthy is the Lamb, they cry. Once again, hope is offered to a community that's filled with dread and despair. When you're here, do you hear the word of God as a warning or a word of hope? Does it demand obedience or does it encourage praise? Consider the hallways, the restrooms, the offices, the classrooms. Think about the parking lot and the grounds around the church. Consider also what is seen and heard in our worship service of what goes on in the gathering spaces before and after worship. What do each of these tell others about what goes on here? How about, does this say who is welcomed in our midst and who isn't? Or how grace is shared is hope offered? Do we express the unconditional and the unearned love of Christ that gave everything just for us? Of a lamb who walked willingly into death so that we might live? Do we praise? Worthy is the lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth, wisdom and might, glory and honor and blessing? Yeah. John's secret message to the persecuted Christians continues as crypt cryptically as it was when he wrote it. Only now, there's a familiar presence that appears. The resurrected lamb, worthy to reveal God's message. Can there be any doubt 
of the hope that's there. There's nothing in this world that can withstand the power of God. It doesn't mean we fear God. Quite the opposite. We can trust in God. That God can topple the hierarchies of nations, society, and wealth. For those oppressed, starving, and poor, this is a word of very big hope. In the end, all nations will come before the Lamb. They will be washed clean. We will worship God day and night. There will be no more crying. Songs of praise will forever muffle the cries of hunger and despair. In the end, God's love wins. Amen. Let us stand and sing the hymn of the day. Is there anything we need to know about this hymn?
promise before your eyes, that our hearts may be cheered in the sure knowledge of your deliverance. Triumphant Lord, hear our prayer. When disaster strikes, we are tempted to panic, judge of or despair. Help us to see the world through your eyes, to sow seeds of healing and reparation wherever it is in our power to do so, and to share the good news of your victorious love with everyone. Triumph of God, hear our prayer. As summer draws to a close, let us forget the rest and renewal we enjoy in you. May we seek you often and find refreshment from our tasks, even as we also find satisfaction in the work that you have laid before us. Triumph of God, you guide us to springs of water and wipe away the tears from our eyes, bringing healing and end of suffering and a wellspring of hope to all who cry out to you. Triumph of God, Blessed be the saints who have washed the reds clean in the blood of the Lamb. Encourage us with their faithful example and bring us with them into your eternal embrace. Triumphant glory of God, hear our prayer. Hear our fervent prayers of our hearts, dear Lord, and may the blessing and wisdom and honor and might be yours now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. For you at home, this is the time to prepare your own communion. The Lord be with you. And also be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times. And in all places, give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God. You reveal your glory as the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adorned in your eternal glory. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. ready to come to your feast in your fellowship, for refreshment, for forgiveness, and for relief from this world's concerns. Come, for the banquet is ready, and all are welcome.
in the um, council room. September 10th, keep in mind, it's Bring a Friend to Church Day. It is Rally Day, the start of Sunday School, Adult Sunday School, the Reading Club. Give me an idea about the Reading Club. No, it's not. It's not. Nobody's participating. That book was so good. <laughs> I have to tell you guys, that was awesome. Um, next week, Kelly's last week. So do come and, and we'll pick on her a little bit. Not badly, but we'll pick on her. Any other announcements? Keep me up, Sue's summer and your prayers. Yes, sir? Rally day, September 12th. I'm, I'm at 12th. I said 10th, didn't I? No big deal. I keep doing that. It's September 12th. <laughs> Please don't come September 10th. Nobody will be here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Let us bow our heads and prepare our hearts to receive God's blessing. May God, who has brought us from death to life, fill you with great joy. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 